you know, PayPal takes 30 cents out of every thing you sell. And yeah. Hey, do me a favor. Fun. Can I call you back in like yeah. five minutes after I record this intro? Oh, sure, go ahead. Okay. That's all right. You, I'll talk to you later on. Okay, I'll call you. Yep, I'll, call, you gotta do. I'll call you back. All right, bye. All right, bye. Dang, Mom, I'm trying to cosplay. What's up, everybody? Buddy Cosplay here. Welcome down to the shop. Today, we're going to change it up a bit, and we're going to go back and do a cosplay spotlight episode. In this video, we're going to interview Kazul from Kazplay, K-A-Z Play, and I'll link to all of her information down below. She's done some really awesome work. Um, she likes to go to the um, World of Warcraft theme convention, which is BlizzCon. Um, she makes great characters for those, and she was nice enough to stop by, show us some of her artwork, and talk about how she makes some of the awesome things, and she tells us what she's making for this year. So stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy the video. Today's guest is Kazul from Casplay. She not only creates her own cosplays, but she does it on a whole new scale. She not only fabricates using materials most cosplayers use, such as foam, but she takes it to a whole new level and creates larger-than-life cosplay characters, not just from the regular foam that most of us create from. And one of her more recent builds was an entire costume for a World of Warcraft Worgen character named Greymane. I'm excited to find out more about this character and uh, everything else that she creates. So welcome, Kaz, to the show. Glad to have you here. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for contacting me. No problem. I'm excited to, to pick your brain. I've been watching the, the build of Grey Mane, and it's epic. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah, I'm hoping to learn a lot from you just from watching your videos and things. I'd like to see more, if you have more. Edit them and throw them out there for me. <laughs> I, well, I definitely do that. I have the one scheduled to go up tomorrow, a video. Awesome. Just of, like, all the compilation work-in-progress videos that I took of that. Okay. Uh, well, just to let people get familiar with who you are, just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do in the cosplay space. All right. Well, I'm Kazool. Um, I really like to build creatures and monsters, as you can see behind me. These are some of my creations. Um, I even build some fursuits. I've been uh, a long time, I, well, a lifetime nerd. I grew up loving fantasy and video games and, you know, just all things like that. Um, I'm, I'm married to a wonderful man. He is also very nerdy like me, and he loves to get in costume with me and perform in these crazy characters that I like to build. For example, like Greymane, I built specifically for him to wear and perform in, and this one I wear and perform in. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, you can probably guess that I'm a huge Blizzard fan, uh, and I've been, for the past four years that I've been attending BlizzCon, I've been trying to build up my name as a cosplayer and get more out there, trying to, you know, show all the progress on all my builds. Um, and even lately, I've been trying to start a YouTube channel and build that up and so I can, you know, sell patterns and do tutorials and all sorts of things. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah, we had some lag. At the last thing you were saying, I, I lost you. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I heard that uh, you wanted to create patterns on a new channel and things like that, and that was the last thing I heard. That, that's about all I said. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you got to love Skype. Yeah. Uh, well, we were talking before we actually started the interview about how most of your creations have been in the vein of World of Warcraft. Tell, tell me about some of the other creatures. I've seen images on your YouTube channel, which we will link to in the description so people can check them out. But I've seen four characters. The Grey Mane, I uh, already forgot the name of the bird guy, the little troll-looking guy with the building roof on his head, and one more. Tell us about those guys. Well, um, some of the other ones that I built for uh, BlizzCon specifically, I built a, a troll druid cat form. That was my very first one. Um, I've also built a Gorin, which that was a creature from Warlords of Draenor. Uh, they are a big orange creature and they have acid spit and they eat rocks and stuff. Um, that, I don't have that one here. That one's actually in permanent storage in a different state because we've been moving around. And that one's too big to carry along. Um, 
And and like I said, I I also uh, do uh, participate in the in with furries and on commission. I build fursuits, um, and that kind of, that money helps fund my personal cosplay hobby. So uh, it, it's like it's a little bit self funding. Um, do a commission here and there, pay for the materials to build my own to compete in. Very nice. What is uh, the going rate, if you don't mind me asking, for a fursuit? Um, you know, 2500 and up. Oh, wow. Very. I imagine it's a lot of work. I've seen you just putting the fur on Grey Mane's head, and it looked like quite a task. Yeah, it is a lot of work, and, you know, that that's you know, why it costs so much. But they're fun, and there's a market for it, so it, it's a good way to do it. And your husband, you, he goes by Frosty, correct? Yes, that's right. Okay, you think that helps to have a, a fellow nerd slash cosplayer fan in the household? Because I, I get yelled at all the time, been in the basement for three hours, come upstairs. Yes, it definitely helps. He definitely understands uh, how much work it takes. Um, and he's, he's always been very conscious. Anywhere we lived, he's like, we have to have an extra bedroom for you specifically to do your work in. Um, I like to call my workroom my lair, so I, I just tell him, I'm like, I'm spending tonight in my lair, you can come watch Netflix next <laughs> to me, but I'll be working. And he does that happily, he loves what I do, so it, it's great. Very nice. And how did you get started making these characters at the begin beginning? What was, what was the initial drive to get started? Well, I. I think it started from a young age. I've always been interested in creatures and animals, just love watching them move around. And I think what was the most appealing to me is that they weren't human. You know, they, they moved so differently, they behaved so differently than humans did. I just found that so fascinating. So, um, you know, growing up watching all the nature documentaries, that's all I watched on TV forever. Um, watching creatures in movies like the Jurassic Park dinosaurs or uh, Starship Troopers, those weird alien bug things. Um, any movie, Godzilla, Reign of Fire, Dragonheart, all these creatures and, and things and all these movies just inspired me so much. Um, I didn't think, like, I, I didn't even think that I could be a part of making these I just thought it was something I'd never be able to achieve and never be able to do. Um, but one day, I was about, I, I was probably like 14 or 15, browsing on DeviantArt, and I saw a cosplay. I'll have to send you the link to it. Um, it was a Kimari cosplay from Final Fantasy. It was the blue cat guy. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was the coolest thing. I'm like, whoa, what is this? And I read in the comments that a lot of people were calling it a fursuit. So I started looking into that. And, you know, after years of observing and watching and seeing all these cool costumes being built, I'm like, I have to give it a try. But I was, uh, by then I was a poor college student. Um, and so I just like, gathered together what I could. I saved for a long time and was able to build my first one. I decided uh, I decided to build a fursuit first because I thought it was easy. There was a lot of tutorials out there and um, the school I was going to, the mascot, was cougars so I decided to build a cougar. Um, I was part of the juggling club at school so I thought, okay, I'll build a cougar mascot, I'll juggle and unicycle in it and just have a grand old time. I actually have it here, I'll show you. So this is the first I built. Very and nice. And that was the first first fursuit? Yes, this was. That's so, that's pretty good work for your very first one. Yeah, I mean I I did uh, in later years replace her eyes and her ears to make them look better. But um, like the inside is really gross. It's raw foam, and I used an old T-shirt to like, with with marker to trace my pattern to build like a balaclava inside. It's all like gross and yellow. <laughs> it, it's terrible to wear, but I mean, I built it, I wore it, I I performed in it, and I had a ton of fun. Well, that's what matters, you know. That first thing that, that inspires you to make the second thing and the third thing, and now you're making, 
you know, huge, huge characters. Yeah. And that first suit, that was the very first thing you made, correct? Or is that yeah. just the first? Well, first that was suit? the first wearable thing. I've always been creative and artistic. Um, I, I was a big sculptor, and I always have a sketchbook. I've had a sketchbook since when I was, you know, 10 years old. <laughs> so I, I'm constantly drawing. I've always been an artist and a sculptor. I always carried around a little blob of clay and was making things out of it. But yeah, that was the first costume I did. All right. Well, if you could go back in time and, and change things, or the first couple things that you've built, you know, with your experiences now and your knowledge and your know-how, what would you have done a little differently that, you know, new people now that are just coming in might be able to, you know, glean something from that insight and maybe get off their, you know, get on track a little faster? Well, um, the crazy thing was, is like that my first fursuit, I, I spent like a year building the head. Like I, I was always scared to work on it almost because I'm like, oh, what if I mess this up? Um, I don't really know what I'm doing, so I like just snip a little bit of foam one day and then look at it for a day and then come back and snip a little more. I wished back then that I would have just worked faster and just gotten through it and finished the thing and learned from it. It wouldn't it didn't need to be perfect. It was gonna be my first one, so I just wanted I if I could give myself advice I'd be like just just do it. Go for it. You'll learn a lot. It probably will be ugly, but those lessons are valuable. Next, 100%. Oh yeah, that's that's good advice, and I wish I would have had that advice. I spent six months trying to make a Iron Man helmet that was garbage, because I tried to yeah. do it with the body filler and all that instead of just working with the simpler material. So. That's very yeah. good advice. And now this isn't something you do full time. You you have a nine to five, correct? That's correct. I work actually. I went to school for it. I am a three D animator on a on a video game. Uh, it's it's a popular online kids game called Animal Jam. So, uh, yeah, three D animation. Animal Jam. Ooh. We have to look that up now. Yeah, it, it's uh, sponsored by National Geographic and. So it's kind of an educational place for kids to safely learn how to interact online, learn about animals. It's a neat little game. Sounds pretty. What kind of dog you got there? Um, I actually have two. That was my German Shepherd. Oh, uh, what's the other one? I have a Husky as well. Husky. I have a Pit and Boxer mix. Nice. So, I love my I love dog. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard him bark and I had to ask because I'm a dog guy. <laughs> and uh, a, a lot of cosplayers these days have moved away from uh, Peppercura and things like that. And a lot of people are really getting into the EVA foam. And I've noticed during watching some of your videos, you're using a lot of things. I don't see a lot of EVA foam. So what is your main material of choice? Right. I... I don't use a lot of that. I use a lot of upholstery foam, um, but lately I've been moving more towards resin. Like I said, I'm a big sculptor. It's my favorite medium to work in. So I make a lot of sculpts and you know do the whole mold making thing and then flush cast resin into them. That's actually what Gray Mane's base of his head is and also this Arakoa. So this is just a hollow plastic shell that I cast from you know my sculpture. Uh, so resin is a big thing. I love working with clay, casting all sorts of bits, like all his teeth, his claws, everything. Um, I also use a lot of a lot of fake fur. Um, lately, I've been using a lot of L two hundred, which is close to EVA. It is a closed cell foam, uh, but it's a little it's it's a lot less dense and. Uh, you you can buy it in big sheets and it doesn't have the texture on one side. Okay, okay. Yeah, I've I've yet to use the L two hundred. I try to do things as cheap as possible for beginners and show them that you can go down to Harbor Freight and buy some floor mats. And of course, that has its limitations. So I had I'd like to try the L two hundred soon. But I have used EVA like for kind of structural things underneath. Um, 
I, I just use a variety of material. I even use a lot of warbler for structural things underneath this stuff. Uh, it's, I don't know, I, I am a mixed bag. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed the helmets you use to hold the heads on. Is that all Warbler? It's it's like sandwich. It's the sandwich method. So I, I got this pattern for an aviator helmet from a YouTuber. His name is Lost Wax, I mm -hmm. think. Um, he does steampunk stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I bought his aviator helmet pattern and modified it. Uh, with all the pieces, I made the sandwich method Warbler. So Warbler craft bone warbler and then just piece those all together for the helmet um, and the only reason I need to do that is because I build these heads so they sit out a little more like in front of your head so I can get that animalistic hunch so very cool I was uh, I was contemplating doing a skexis from dark crystal and it's kind of that bird look where the head sits out and the hunched over body I haven't decided on it but I may have to pick your brain if I go that direction. I love, I love Jim Henson's stuff, so yes, I love the sketches. Yeah, that was beautifully dark. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the name, Dark Crystal. Uh, but looking back at all the different things you've made, the big characters, the small things, different projects, uh, what's your favorite costume or prop or just any build that you've made? I, I would have to say that this, the Aracoa is my favorite. And uh, I think it's mostly for the performance aspect. I love performing this character because he, you know, it has a limp. So in the cost, when I'm wearing the costume, I'm like hunched over and I'm pretending to limp, and I get to be really creepy and you know do the whole twitching bird head thing. Um, I, I just love performing in it. I really would like to revisit this and rebuild it all from scratch to uh, bring it up to my current level of skill in building. But I, I really love this. It was my first time like stepping out of the, the, the fursuit box and doing something a little different. And so this one, this one definitely holds a special place for me. And you're talking about uh, performing. I've noticed in a lot of your videos you talk about a handler which is your husband does the handling for you and you do it for him. What is the uh -huh. handler's job for those who don't know? Right, so you can see our, our faces are completely covered in these kind of costumes and you really can't see all that well. So, and, and you don't want to be carrying around things like water bottles because these can get hot. So your handler helps you get around safely uh, they hold your water for you and make sure you're cool and hydrated. They also um, help direct you towards photos because you can't, uh, you know, with, with your ears covered, you can't always hear everyone. And so they'll be like, hey, stop, pose for a picture, look in that direction. And the, they're just there to help you and help you perform to the best of your abilities. Uh, what's, what's been your biggest struggle with building these characters that you have behind you? Um, well, a lot of it um, is, is probably a little bit in confidence because um, nobody's quite done crazy things like this before, so I'm oftentimes having to come up with ideas out of my head and being like, huh, I think that'll work. And just being brave enough to try it out, uh, see if it works. Um, also, I, I guess since it's just me and my husband, when I'm building a costume for me, um, like trying it on and trying to describe to him being like, hey, does this fit right? And I'm moving around and he's like, I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, and, you know. I, I've kind of remedied that by, you know, taking lots of videos, being like, here, just video me moving around a lot, and I also have some good friends online that I can post it and be like, hey, what do you think? They'll give me feedback. Um, and so that that's helped build my confidence in it, I guess. How many times do you have to redo parts of your costume before you get to your final build? Like with, with Greymane, from start to finish, how long did it take you to create it, and how many versions? Uh, okay. Well, with with Greymane, I 
did have to rush a little. I built him in a little over two months. Um, and so I didn't have a lot of time to redo things, but uh, I, let's see. It, it, with his muscle suit, like when I built, I had to build a muscle suit for my husband to bulk him up to be like a wagon. Um, with that, it was it was a quite a process of two days, just having him constantly be like, here, try this on, have him put it all the way on, and then I'll be like, okay, pin a few things in place, take it off, sew them in place, put a few more things on, put it back on, on off, on off, um, and. I, I really wish I could have redone the feet. I wasn't entirely happy with them when they were done. I wish I could have redone. I didn't have time. Um, but but so yeah, this is a little special case. I didn't redo that much just because I was rushing rushing through so much. Okay, and um, I know you've you've changed characters. You've done different kinds that have different shapes and different builds and. And I've seen some of your, your thoughts on social media about some of your bigger ideas that you'd like to do. I think you were referencing something like the, the raptors, the suits, to build a bigger oh. character. <laughs> what would be the biggest character that you might shoot for if you could? If you had the time and the money, what would be If I had the time, the space, too, because this would be big. I, I love StarCraft. Um, I would want to build a ultra list that would take two people to perform in. So you have like those old horse costumes where one person would be the back legs, one person would be the front legs and the sides, and and just perform in this really huge, larger than life ultra list. Very um, nice. And and like you referenced, I'd also love to build like a realistic T Rex costume like those uh, raptor ones that you see people, they're all hunched inside and can control the neck from inside. Mm -hmm. I would really love to build that too. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not quite ready to tackle that myself, but that's definitely on my list. I think that'd be an adventure to do. Uh, I, I do want to kind of ask you this, because you've been doing this for a few years now, so there's obviously some some things that keep your enthusiasm up about creating these characters and going to BlizzCon. What is it specifically for you that, uh, that keeps you motivated and makes you want to do this? Because it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of money. So what is it that keeps you going? Um, I, I personally just get a lot of joy out of the creative process. Like, I love planning. I have plans and designs and sketches for a dozen costumes that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, I, I love just that process of working through problems, solving it, and then having it work. You know, um, that the I get joy in the process as well as from the final product. Like I said, I really enjoy love performing as these creatures and characters. Um, and the the reaction people give you when you're in a character like this, where you know your face is covered, you come you become completely that character, and everyone sees you as that character around you. Um, like I could be smiling like a dork inside the costume, but I'm still an angry bird, uh, <laughs> and I'm still in character. So getting that 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 joy of performing like being the monster that I always admire in movies from the past, you know, uh, that, that's really satisfying. Seeing people's reactions, like, it is priceless, too. So, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of points that, that keep up my, my enthusiasm. I love people's reactions when I post something on my computer. That's, it's always a good feeling when you're like, here, look what I made, and people are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> It's much better than a boo. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, now, you specifically go to the BlizzCon convention, right? Do you go to others? I, I attend some furry ones on the side. Um, I have attended things like uh, Dragon Con and uh, a few of like the, the local Comic Cons. Um, but my favorite by far is BlizzCon. 
And you've entered your costumes into them, into the costume contest? Yes, that's right. And you've won some honorable mentions? Yeah. So far, I've, I've, I've entered four times, and I've gotten three honorable mentions. Well, congratulations for that. That's, that's quite a, a feat in itself. It is. Like, the BlizzCon competition is so tough. There's usually 100 entrants. They have the first, second, third, and fourth place, and then they take yeah, anywhere from 8 to 10 honorable mentions. So it's, it's very prestigious. <laughs> Wasn't the guy that won today the guy that was missing the eye and they had the LED in there and the big suit? Was that the guy from BlizzCon? Um, no. That, oh, that was not from BlizzCon. That was from Gamescom or one of the, the, the overseas European conventions. Okay. And they, they were at BlizzCon, but, and they were featured on stage. So they, they were, they won in... I think it was Gamescom. It might have been another one. But yeah, it was like a Reinhardt from That's Overwatch. it. Yeah, I was like, good luck winning against that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to ask you a little bit more about Greymane. Um, I don't know if you're up to answering the question, but I'm going to ask. You could say, eh, I'd rather not say if you'd like. But what was you, what do you think would be your total investment to create? Gray Maine, you know, somebody was interested in doing something like that. Um, I would say that he was around six hundred dollars in materials. Um, many, many more hours than that, but around six hundred dollars. I would have guessed more. It, yeah, it is a little cheaper because um, I don't know. I have a, a lot of the materials on hand already. I would say by far my most expensive one was the friend that I built. And that, that approached uh, close, to, oh no, that surpassed a thousand dollars in materials. Wow. Was it gold plated? <laughs> no, <laughs> it was that Darnell 200. It's expensive. <laughs> That's why I stick with the EVA. I'll, I'll mail you some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and you said earlier that you have dozens of ideas floating around in your sketchbook and in your head. Do you have any tips for beginners to stay focused on like one idea? Because I, you see, here's an incomplete one. Here's an incomplete one. If you looked over here, there's another one. I can't personally focus and just complete one. Do you have any tips that might help the new people? Um. Okay. So when you're building a costume or cosplay anything you have the really exciting parts and the really tedious parts right like uh, sanding super tedious but like first when you first glue all your foam pieces together and it creates that awesome gel like you're like oh yeah this is great the first time you get to put it on oh yeah this is great um, just just realize that there's tedious moments and and you know you just have to be disciplined and work through those to get to the rewarding parts um, and yeah just really be dedicated and get through that and because because finishing that 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 last step in finishing something is a really important step and yeah you have to learn it there's there's a learning curve and if you don't ever do it, you'll never learn those important lessons, like I said earlier. So just just really push through, you know, put on some Netflix and sand away for hours. Um, it, it'll be worth it. And once you complete it, then yes, you'll get that, that buzz, that drive, and you'll realize that, oh yeah, I need this on my other unfinished projects. <laughs> <laughs> I could do four more now. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and if you never finish it, Jim Henson will never call and offer you a job. That's right. Um, just uh, if you have any insight, uh, maybe a, um, a trick or some sort of a tip that's had a huge impact that's improved your overall costuming or creativity or whatever part of it is, um, what would that tip be if you could just pick one thing that you think has had a big impact that might help somebody out? I, I think th this tip I learned in school, like being in uh, the animation industry and in video games, it, there's a phrase 
that is fail fast. Now that means like you you want to dive into something, fail as fast as you can, so you can figure out what doesn't work, so you can get get busy on what does work. Now I I do a ton of prototyping and mock-ups and sketches to try to figure out what will work as fast as I can, um, and and that. So here I have an example. Um, the muscle suit that I built for Greymane. It was the first muscle suit I was going to build. It was going to be a little different than any reference pictures I could find online because I had to build like a hunch into it because organs had that hunched over look. So what I did is I, I sculpted a little figure, just a little six inch figure of a human and I cast that in resin and cast a whole bunch of them and then I took clay on top of that and sculpted out my design, you know, be like, oh, here's where the basic muscles need to go. And so this, you know, putting the clay on this figure took me all of a half hour, you know, and I could see what works. It's small scale, so I can, I can really work fast, figure out what doesn't work. I can try things. I'm like, what if I put pecs on it? Oh, that makes him look like he has a beer gut. So. I I mean abdominal muscles, like that looks like a beer gut, so I'm going to leave it off. Anyway, so th this, is, this is a strategy I use a lot, like mocking it up in miniature um, and, and in 3D because my brain th thinks in 3D. Uh, so that, that's an idea. I do that all the time, sculpting small scale things just to you know, get, get the visuals in my mind because if I just went straight to the... Just building whatever I thought looked good on the full figure, I'd waste a lot of time because it takes time to sculpt those muscles and get them sewn in the right place. And if I sewed them in the wrong place right off the bat, I'd fail and waste a bunch of time. So um, always prototype, always try to fail as fast as you can so you can get onto the good stuff. Good advice, I like that. I really like that tip too. How long did it take you to create your little miniature person? Um, you know, that, that was like a couple nights on the couch sculpting while I was watching TV with my husband. Um, just made a little mold. That, actually, that one is a little outdated. Um, I, I have now a 3D model of myself that I do. Since I went to school for that, I know how to do it. Modeled myself, and I have a 3D printer, so I, I can just 3D print me another little form. Uh, so, I mean, it's a little investment up front, but in the long run, it, it'll help me, it's helped wonders on all my projects. Cool. I like it. It's, it's a really neat idea. I might have to implement that, steal all your ideas. And... There are, you can buy some figures. I don't have the link on hand, but it's like a little uh, one six scale, so it's a little bigger. One six scale man that's clay it's it's this really hard wax clay so you'd have to heat him up to pose him uh and then it, at room temperature it's like wax so it's pretty stiff um that you can buy that online if you are un incapable of making your own um that i know there's also free 3d models of generic humans that you could acquire and maybe if you don't have a 3d printer you can send to uh, Shapeways and get it printed and sent to you. So there's multiple ways of getting a hold of a little figure uh, if you're not artistic and don't have the means to make your own. Yeah, I've seen those little wooden posable ones that artists use for form you could pick up at like yeah, art those, stores. Those ones, those ones are okay. They're not, um, they're not that anatomically correct. So they don't help you as much. So a, a more correct one would, would help more. Yeah. And you said you actually have a 3D model of yourself? Yeah, that I made. So when <laughs> you... I, I just took a picture of myself like in a T-pose from the front and the side and just put together a real quick, it's quite low poly model of myself. I did it in a day. So you can keep printing out little mini-me's? 
Yeah. A little minion army take over the world. I can print them. I can print it at any scale too. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, I wanted to ask about future builds. I didn't know if you really wanted to discuss it, but I know you released what your plans were for 2017 BlizzCon on your channel. So if you don't mind sharing, uh, what is your intention for this year's build for BlizzCon? Okay, this year I'm going to build Hogger. He's like the level one raid boss of Warcraft, the first elite mob that you run across. He's a null. I've always liked gnolls. They're kind of like where hyena people, I guess. Uh, they're, they're kind of silly, um, and I, I'm looking forward to the, the performance aspect of it, where I can really put a lot of character into it, hop around, uh, and be silly, because everyone loves Hogger or has killed him at least once. So. <laughs> Was he in vanilla Warcraft? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, you, you encounter him around level 10, and you always had to go, you know, looking for group for Hogger and gather a small raid of people to, to defeat him. Do you guys currently still play Warcraft? Yes, we do. Uh, we, we love playing together. My husband has a raid team, and we all go together. We're on the current content, so <laughs> we love playing. I left when the pandas came in. I was like, this is too much for me. I'm out. <laughs> like, that's actually when I was able to start playing. Like I said, I was a poor college student. Couldn't afford to play till after I got married. Uh, my husband's been playing since uh, I started in Pandaria. Very cool. Yeah, actually, um, I think, yeah, the, pan the pandas was the next one that came out when I quit. But I had a six-year-old. I have a six-year-old now, so that's how long ago it was when I quit. But when she was born, there was, I have a picture of me holding her in my arm, and I've got the mouse in my hand, and I'm sitting at the <laughs> table playing on my laptop. And my wife said, that's enough. You got to yeah. get rid of the game. And I went through withdrawals for like, uh, still, I think about it. I'm like, oh man, I'd love to get on Blackwater Raiders and talk to my old guildies. And, you yeah. know, I loved it. And their life gets busy. So. It sure does. But now we get to build this stuff. Yeah. Uh, before I uh, wrap this up, um, do you have any other work that you have sitting around that you don't that you'd like to share? Because I'm sure everybody would like to see some of the things you have. I'm, I'm building this. This is a this is for a commission. Actually, I I talked about doing commissions to fund my work. So this is going to be Lynx cosplay for, um, from Chrono Cross. Um, it could also be a Khajiit. I, this this is a, a new technique I'm developing, you know, of building a head out of this LT-100 bomb. It could also be built out of EVA. It's the same building technique. And so, yeah, I, I hope to maybe release the pattern for this and see some Khajiits running around, because it could be a Khajiit from Skyrim or any other cat person from video games or yeah. things. You put it on the front of a Warcraft shield. Yeah, you could. You could put it as a shoulder, like a pauldron. There you go. Now, while you got that out, if you don't mind me asking, like the eyes, how it's kind of flat in the front, is that two separate pieces that are glued together, or do you have some technique that you're folding it? Oh, th those are those are two separate pieces. So this this plane is a piece, and that plane is another piece. It's just how I patterned it. You, know, you can see it inside a little okay. bit. Well, on the video, it's it's pretty seamless. That's why I was asking if it was somehow folded and bent or sanded. Yeah, it's it's a little bit carved in and sanded. I've, I've worked it a little more. I think my video's cut out. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Skype is failing us today. Yeah, it is. All right. Um, well, I'd like to, uh, again, thank you for taking the time to stop by and share some of your things. Is there anything that you'd like to talk about that I have missed? Other than mm -hmm. your contact stuff, which I will link to in the description yeah. below. Yeah, you can find me, Kazool G Fox, on like Twitter, Instagram, DeviantArt, or Casplay on Facebook, Casplay videos on YouTube. Um, I really am putting some serious effort into my YouTube, so uh, I have a video coming up 
tomorrow and a video coming up later this week that's a tutorial for how I did the eyes in Grey Mane. He's got really intense eyes that people have been impressed by, so I'm going to share that knowledge. And, and yeah, I, I, I actually love talking about building, and I'm very open with anything, any of my techniques. So hit me up if you have any questions. All right, and this year is Hogger, and you're going to be updating on social media as well as your YouTube channel the progress of your build? That's right. All right, excellent. Well, thank you again uh, for stopping by. I'll make sure to link to everything in the show notes. And if you hang in there a second, we'll go ahead and wrap this up and uh, end the video. And again, thank you for stopping by. Yeah, thank you for having me again. No problem. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, you should think about stopping over and seeing me at cccosplay.com. There you can find articles and tips to help you take your cosplay to the next level. Also, if you sign up for the membership email list, I'll send you a few surprises and let you know about special things before anyone else has a chance to hear about them. It'll be our little secret. And remember, stay crafty.